Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the media. And happy Friday to you all. I'm Sharon Lee Sang, Director of Public Affairs, Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. So without further ado, let me give you an update on what's been happening. As usual, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, along with the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force and the other arms of the protective services involved in the fight against crime continue to work assiduously well together to ensure the safety and security of the national community. To date, we have taken 128 firearms off the streets and recovered 12,527 assorted ammunition and 31 magazines. Over the past 24 hours, we have arrested 82 persons for various offenses, one homicide, 17 drug-related, five breach of curfew, three other offenses, five serious offenses, 37 outstanding warrants, 12 inquiries, two traffic offenses, and 31 fixed penalty notices. In Central Division this morning, between 7 and 10 a.m., a party of officers from CID Port of Spain and stolen vehicles under the supervision of Sergeant Deo Narain and Swamba acting on information went to a home located at Calcutta number two in Freeport and conducted a search at that home and found approximately 70 grams of cocaine valued at $25,000 and a half a kilogram of marijuana valued about $5,000. Five persons were arrested in the home, two females ages 24 and 47 and three males between the ages of 24 and 45. Also in Central, a warrant exercise conducted in the Shagona's district between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. yesterday by Shagona's warrant officers resulted in the arrest of nine persons and the execution of 15 warrants. The persons, all of whom are from Shagona's enterprise area, are between the ages of 28 and 58. They are arrested for various offenses, including firearms, outstanding warrants, traffic offenses. The exercise was conducted incident-free. In Port of Spain, as we speak right now, officers are presently at the Director of Pub Public Prosecutions awaiting instructions before proceeding on a report of an alleged sexual assault against a three-year-old boy. On, that. on Thursday, October 13, between 1.40 a.m. and 8.41 a.m., officers from the Port of Spain <laughs> Divisional Task Force, I'm looking at that time, assisted by the CID, conducted exercises in the Port of Spain Division. Nine persons were arrested and detained for outstanding warrants. One bulletproof vest and one camouflage jacket was recovered. Two kilograms of marijuana valued at $20,000 was also discovered. No one was arrested in that incident. Incidentally, officers from community police will be at St. Bob's Primary School on Monday to give a motivational speech to parents and teachers at their parent day celebrations. Also, community police officers from Western Division will also conduct some lectures for front four students in that area. These are just part of our Policing for People initiative and our community policing activities. Incidentally, there are 42 police youth clubs across Trinidad and Tobago. I'll now open the floor for any questions that you all may have. Good morning again, Sharon. Uh, yesterday you told us that you would name the lead investigator in the case against Mr. Warner. Do you have that name for us uh, today? I said that I would find out. Have you found it? Well, I've been told I can't tell you all that. Why not? Because that is privileged information. Uh, now, is Mr. Warner aware that he's being um, investigated, or is this a case where, like Julian John and Eric Sincere, you may have spoken out of tune and, and told the media that somebody was being investigated without Mr. Warner knowing that he was being investigated. Is he aware that he's being investigated? But he knows now, but was he aware before? As I said yesterday, um, up to yesterday and even up to this morning, Mr. Warner has not been questioned. 
But was he aware that there is an investigation going on? Or was he aware before yesterday? Well, I, I don't know what Mr. Warner would have been told or what he would know, but I'm not, I can't say if the police would have had a discussion with him, as I said. Uh, not. Any follow-up on the, the case of the um, missing, the, the escaped convicts from? No, we're still oh. aggressively looking for them. It's a manhunt. It is a man involving other arms of the protective services. Has FIFA responded to the letter sent by the Commissioner of Police? Has FIFA? Which, which letter? Concerning Mr. Jack Warner. The first letter? Yes. Um, I believe so. What about the second letter? I'm not too certain. Um, I'm not too certain. I believe the Commissioner of Police said that the investigation against Mr. Warner or into Mr. Warner was closed. Or oh, there was nothing to prove, if I'm quoting him correctly. Yesterday said you said the investigation is ongoing, which I, is it? I said that how behind the scenes work has been going on looking into that matter. Yes. Despite the fact that the commissioner said that there's nothing to prove. The commissioner said based on the information that they have, but that did not stop us from look, taking a closer look. Um, following up again on the, the three-year-old was allegedly sodomized. I'm reading today's newspapers. It said that the boy is either en route to England or already in England for further testing. It, has, it is inconclusive whether or not he has been sodomized. And you said that police are awaiting instructions from the DPP. Well, based on our investigations, we have gone to the DPP and the officers are there right now at the DPP's office waiting on instructions. So they're confirming that the boy was sexually assaulted and waiting on instructions now to charge. I just said that based on the information that came to hand, based on our investigations, the officers went to the D DPP. I can't confirm or deny. I'm not a medical practitioner. But based on the information that the police have? Well, I haven't seen the information that the police have, so I can't make a pronouncement on that information. But I know for a fact that they are at the DPP as we speak. Uh, you said there was a homicide last night? I'm trying to... Someone was arrested. Someone was arrested for a homicide. Oh. I thought it was a homicide. That's not a homicide. Yeah, which homicide was that in relation to, you think? It was in Western Division. But in relation to the murder of... I don't have that information. All I have is that there was someone arrested for a homicide in Western Division. Indeed. I don't have that information. Wow. But I would like to update you all on something. Um, to remind the public of our mandate. Right? The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service is committed to preventing re and reducing the threat of crime, enhancing the safety and security of citizens, thereby positively influencing the quality of our life in society. Our mandate outlines our responsibility to maintain law and order, to preserve peace, protect life and property, prevent and detect crime, apprehend offenders, enforce all laws and regulations with which it is charged. There's been some statements in the media concerning a high-handed manner of the commission, and I want to address that. With regards to those statements being circulated in the media, I would like to bring some clarity to the misinformation. The Commission of Police has been consistent in his dealings with the applications he has received for the hosting of public meetings, public gatherings, or public marches all groups, whether political, religious, or other. The Emergency Powers Regulations 2011, Section 71 states, and I quote, except with prior permission in writing of the Commission of Police, the grant of which shall be in his discretion, no person shall hold or take part in any public march or in any public meeting. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. In addition, we have information that persons are changing the dates on the curfew permits and using them outside of the date which the curfew permit was granted. We want to alert those persons that anyone found to be using a curfew permit illegally other than for the period for which it was issued will be prosecuted. 
permanent seats. I don't have that information. Excuse me, Ms. Leah, um, um, what is the investigation with the teacher at the prestige school? I read something today that the DPP says that there's not enough evidence to charge him. Well, I know that our investigations are ongoing. I believe that we're also seeking to have um, some uh, representatives from our witness and victims and witness support um, unit go in and meet with some of the students and the teachers in the school just to provide some counseling if they the need be necessary. Ms. Leah, um, regarding the issue of um, granting for public functions and occasions, um, you say that the commission is consistent with our granting applications through the, this emergency, health emergency. But um, one question I'd like to ask, um, because how, how, what is the procedure that you would grant, uh, grant an occasion during the state of emergency, like if it's a garden, what was the procedure? Because we have seen other events, um, particularly there was a, a Scotia Bank 5K, there was some other, is some other events, I believe, were granted um, permission. Tell me, what, what does the commissioner look at to, to, to grant an uh, organization or group what? to have, a, to have an event during a state of emergency? I think what you have to be guided by is by the, the emergency powers regulation. You have to be guided by that. And it is very specific in terms of how it's outlined, what are the requirements, what are the, the areas of the discretion. So, based on that, what, what, there are certain what? types of event. But as I said, you would ask you are asking me to interpret the law, and I'm not a lawyer. But all we ask is that persons applying outline specifically what they want to do, whether they want to, it's a, a march, whether it's a, a gathering, whether it's whatever the event is for, whether it's religious or whoever. But they must be very specific in their application and send it to the com address it to the commission of police. And he and the other deputies will go through it and make a determination. One other thing I wanted to tell you all. Before you move on, on that same issue. You said that the commissioner was consistent in granting <coughs> permission. However, the TOP was allowed to march in Tobago, while the unions and the PNM were denied. So it is seemingly that um, there's some, some sort of bias or political interference in that a member of the partnership is allowed to march in Tobago, which is also under the state of emergency, which covers the, the application for marching, while the PNM who is having a, a routine um, gathering is, is denied. Well, as I said, our findings is that the information, his this determination has been consistent. I will have to look into your way. And answer me on Monday? Of course. Thank you. All right, it's Friday, as I said, the weekend. Please wait. Statistics compiled by our Crime and Problem Analysis Bureau shows that 46% of all fatal road accidents occur on the weekend. So, motorists, please be stressed. If you have to drive, please don't drink. Take care of yourself and take care of your, your family. It's within your power not to drink and drive. On behalf of the Commission of Police and the other arms of the Protective Services, we thank the members of the national community for supporting us and giving us uh, information and assisting us in bringing the perpetrators of crime and criminal elements to justice. We assure you that all arms of the Protective Services are working exceptionally well together, utilizing a collaborative approach to bring back order and law in Trinidad and Tobago. Remind law-abiding citizens that they need not fear. The activities of the police and the other arms of the protective services are aimed at those persons intent on breaking the law. We urge the members of the national community to continue to partner with us, sharing information at the numbers 800-0699, 800-0700, and 555. Thank you for your continued support and enjoy the rest.